With the release of any new performance car, there's obviously some level of delay before aftermarket components are released out into the market. And with the A90 Toyota Supra becoming a fan favourite, obviously a lot of engine builders and tuners have been looking for more power out of the engine. And we're here with Barry from Marley Motorsports to talk about their just released forged piston. So Barry, when you are dealing with what is a relatively new engine and you're looking at developing components such as pistons, what are your first design considerations when you're deciding on the new piston design? Well, for uh, any kind of application, first thing to start with is what does the customer need? And what, what, do the customer, what are they asking us for? With something brand new like this, it's a little bit harder, but we know that with a Supra, these customers are going to go fast with this engine and they're going to build it as hard as they can. So we started with uh, looking at the OE data because Molly makes the OE uh, pistons for these BMW engines, um, which gives us a little bit of an advantage. From there, we worked into, okay, what kind of boost do we expect these pistons to see, um, which you know, turns into crown thickness measurements and, and what material we need to use. And uh, from there, we just kind of work our way up and we end up with a great product at the end most of the time, yeah. Now there's a lot that goes into that, I'm going to dig in deep on a few of those components. The first of them is the compression ratio. So with the stock BMW inline 6 engine being a direct injected turbocharged engine, as with a lot of these engines, direct injection and forced induction, we are seeing quite high compression ratios. That seems to work quite well with direct injection even on a relatively low octane pump fuel. Uh, but of course a lot of these tuners are removing the direct injection system, reverting to port injection because there's a lot more flexibility and also increasing the boost level. So what did you decide to do there with the compression ratio? For our piston, we actually uh, dropped the compression by half a point on, based on that fact of just customers need, if they're going to turn the boost up, they like a lower compression ratio. They're going to run pump gas. And also we, we decided to keep our direct injected bowl in the center of the piston. That way we know it's all in the right space and it's in the right location. If they want to keep direct injected, it'll be just, just fine. But if they want to go port injected, it's still in a localized spot on the piston to where we can uh, feel comfortable that the fuel and air coming into the cylinder is not going to have any kind of weird turbulence or anything like that. Uh, well, I want to come back to that bowl, but before we do that, is, is there still flexibility in compression ratio or is that a, a fixed part with just that 10.5 to 1 compression? Right now in our catalog it's just a 10.5. We've already had a couple of people today ask for a lower compression. They're going to run a lot more boost than normal. Um, and that's something they could definitely call us up and, and we can do that. Yeah, I, I assume that once you've got that base design it's relatively easy to uh, make modifications to aspects like that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, And it, it has a dome in the center so uh, normally less compression is the easier version. Going higher compression is where it gets a little tricky. Alright, so you talked about that bowl and again for those who aren't really aware of what you're talking about there, uh, something a common aspect with direct injected engines, can you tell us why that bowl is important? What function does it serve? So the bowl is, is fixed right underneath the inject, the, where the direct injector comes into the chamber. Um, the bowl pattern is meant to distribute the fuel evenly throughout the cylinder and make sure that the fuel is spread out in a manner to which it can burn most efficiently. Um, that is something that we, our bowl design shape, et cetera, comes from the factory BMW uh, spec and, and dimensions. So it's something that we're really confident in and, and it also allows us a chance to have um, a, really, a really solid dome design that's unique and, uh, and that we know works. So it, it would be possible for a piston manufacturer to actually create some major problems if you, the person tuning or building the engine retained the direct injection and it didn't have that bowl because you weren't getting that distribution of the fuel through the combustion chamber? Correct, yes. You could, you could have some kind of localized hot spots or some kind of detonation issue. If you're not um, distributing that fuel correctly, it could definitely cause issues. Right, so the BMW engine is an aluminium engine block and uh, we're seeing a lot of modern alloy engines now for weight, weight reasons use a nickel coating but this still runs a uh, cast, cast iron ductile iron sleeve? Correct, yes. Yeah. Does this mean that you can overbore the engine and are these pistons available in oversize? The pistons are not available for oversize right now. Um, I believe they're running a three and a half millimeter wall thickness around the cylinders. I'm not 100% sure, sure on that. But um, we can definitely do a oversize if a customer wants it. We just do not have it on the shelf right now. now obviously, at this point in 2019, these engines are essentially all brand new. So uh, you're not dealing with something that's got uh, 100 plus thousand miles with a lot of, of 
or where. So are your pistons designed to be a drop in or do they still require some machining to the boards? They are drop in, ready to go. They are going to be lighter than the factory pistons um, based on some of the features that we changed. The crown is actually thicker, which is a, a, a good feature we can come back to. but. Um, with it being lighter, yes, you'll you'll have to look at weight balancing your crankshaft. But we figure if somebody's putting these pistons in, they're going to the racetrack and they're going to balance it anyway. Now, you just mentioned the, the crown thickness. So can you just talk us through the importance of crown thickness in a high performance, high boost application? So crown thickness is important for a couple reasons. One is uh, the pressure that the crown's going to see from, from just the combustion levels. Uh, so you need thickness there just for support. And two, it's going to work as a heat sink to get Crown, uh, crown heat down through to the oil. We've seen cases where if you have too thick of a crown, the heat stays in the alloy and it doesn't actually ever get cooled off. So there's there's a, a threshold there that you need to stay within. And with our different alloys, I think we've kind of dialed that in over the years. And um, with this part, it's, it's on the thicker side just because we know that that is what, these are gonna see high boost. So. Yeah. Normally with an aftermarket forged piston we tend to see the weight increase and given the fact that you've just said the crown's thicker again it would stand to reason that you would be expecting an increase in weight so where does that weight saving come from? Where does the, the reduction in material come from? On this piston it's going to be from one we're running a shorter pin that's going to eliminate some pin bending we're also when you say a shorter pin we are also have a thicker wall so you're going to eliminate bending but you're also going to still have support. When you shorten that pin, your pin bosses are going to come in, which is going to save you weight. And it's also the undercrown, the way the skirts and everything are designed. We put, we put weight wherever we're, we think it's going to be the most helpful for a motorsport application. So at this point in time, and obviously it's a constantly moving target, I think we've seen sort of power figures hovering around that 1,000 horsepower flywheel mark from the A90 Supra. Uh, given your engineering uh, design of this piston, where would you see the limits being in terms of power, power potential? For the engine or for the piston? For, for the piston. Uh, well over 1,000. Well over a thousand. We have a we have a design that's pretty similar for another BMW. That uh, I think it's around 1100 to 1200 right now. And honestly, I think that this Supra is a little more robust, just because I think people are going to try and set more records with it. Yeah, it's definitely a popular platform, and uh, we look forward to seeing where people get to once more and more people get their hands on the engine. Thanks for the chat there, Barry. And if people want to find out more about that piston, where can they go to? MollyMotorsports.com is the first place I would go that has a product listing. It also has links to all of our tech videos. Uh, Molly Motorsports Instagram is uh, very uh, up to date with as far as what's going on in the office and all of our offerings and everything like that. And also our YouTube channel is, is a, great, uh, a great spot to check out any kind of featured videos or if customers having a problem putting something together, we're probably talked about it on there and tried to help you out. So, Perfect. Thanks for the chat. Yeah, no problem. Thank you.